Hey all, Eurogamers Ian Higton here. So the last time I made a best Switch games money can buy video was back in 2019, which means the Nintendo Switch is now over five years old. During that time, not only have there been hundreds, nay, thousands more games released for the console, but also countless new Nintendo fans will have emerged after picking up their own Switches in the three years since my last list. So whether you're a new Switch owner who's struggling to choose from Nintendo's stupendous selection of games, or you're already a proud owner of the Switch and just want to make sure you're rocking the best of the best in your console, here, in no particular order, is our updated 2022 list for the 20 best games on the Nintendo Switch. The last time I had a Wii in my living room was after the Eurogamer Christmas party in 2019, but before then it was back in the days of the original Wii Sports, when everyone and their grannies were playing Wii Sports Bowling. Nintendo Switch Sports is the latest game in the sports series, and it contains six titles, three new, three returning, and an additional golf game, which is arriving this autumn as a free update. Other games in the roster include volleyball, soccer, and of course, everyone's favourite game of virtual ball toss, bowling, which of course, remains a treat for all. These games are so refined and delivered with such odd coffee shop and library charm that it doesn't matter how you play them either, be it old school style against the family in the living room with the sofas and tables pushed to the sides of the room, or online where you can level up against players from around the world. The whole package then is intoxicating. There you are! You monsters! Developer Monolith Soft has made huge strides technically since the sometimes fuzzy Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which featured in our last Best Switch games list. So that one's been pushed aside for the newest entry in the series, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. It's a game that embraces what people love about classical JRPGs, things like the sensation of running through endless fields of long grass with your companions, or facing impossible odds with a spring in your step. This all feeds into the incredible sense of adventure that makes Xenoblade Chronicles 3 truly soar as a JRPG. Perhaps more than any game before it in the series, this gets the balance between systems and story down perfectly. Even better, it manages to entwine the two in an adventure that infuses each of your footsteps with a sense of purpose. It might not be quite the revelation the original was back in 2010, but Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is most definitely another JRPG masterpiece, and thanks to the fact that it's tailored for newcomers as much as it is for older fans, it's a must-buy for Switch owners, whether you've played any of the previous games in the series or not. Finding a path that lets us all live, I will make that my mission. staring at. Come on, shady lady. Stop calling me that! You need me? At first glance, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes may look like a Dynasty Warriors clone with a Fire Emblem skin, but it's way, way more than that. Three Hopes is a genuinely impressive, faster-paced take on the Fodlan War that revisits familiar story beats with fresh twists in a way that'll likely please Three Houses fans, whilst also being more than welcoming to newcomers. When it comes to the combat, anyone who's played a Musou game before knows exactly what to expect here. Three Hopes doesn't even try to revolutionise the Musou formula, so if you're dead set against this style of combat, this game probably won't change your mind. However, it still feels like a reinvigorated approach to the genre, and it balances strategy with more action-driven combat in some very clever and inventive ways. This keeps life just as entertaining outside of battles as it is when you're using your warrior gauge to smash through legions of foes. There really is a surprising depth to Three Hope's strategic gameplay, but most importantly, it's a lot of fun. And we can't wait to see where Nintendo's Musou spin-off concept goes next. You can win this fight. I know you can.
there's an overpowering sense of novelty to Pokemon Legends Arceus. Part remake, part prequel, this is something new whilst also still being the Pokemon you know and love. Arceus is set a long, long time before the adventures of Ash and his pals, though, and here the poke hunting action takes place in the feudal Japan inspired Hisui region, which consists of small open world areas that feel one half Monster Hunter and one half Breath of the Wild. Because of the size, you'll get new Pokémon to ride, and of course, that means access to more new Pokémon and more new research tasks to complete. There are even boss fights now, which replace your traditional gym battle, and these pit you against massive noble-type Pokémon that can even, shock horror, KO your Pokémon trainer too. For some fans, Pokémon Legends Arceus can seem a little bare-bones, but once you really get into it, we think you'll realise that this is Pokémon in its purest form. Somewhere far across the Ali Ali world is Radlandia, a nation where the beaches, trees and rocks you ride across were forged by the skate gods themselves. Oli Oli World is of course a skating game, but these types of arcade skating games are always, secretly, two games in one. In the case of Oli Oli World, the main objective is just to get to the end of each level without introducing your brittle body to a sturdy piece of scenery. But then you look at your map and you notice that there are optional challenges in that level to complete too. And you know, who wouldn't want to advance to trick through a ghost or ollie over an easily splattered seagull? Optional challenges like these tug you into seeing the level you just battled over as a series of fresh possibilities with new routes to take and new times to improve. And then, once you're through with that first level, you'll find out that the entirety of Oli Oli World is filled with these optional possibilities, and they're absolutely everywhere. It's an utterly Moorish blend of platform hurdles that are fixed and that you need to ace, but it's those optional challenges that leave gaps for self-expression and doing extra tricks and chains and grabs and manuals and spins for wild points that will really tail grab you and never let you go. Oli Oli World really is the perfect skateboarding game for a handheld device. Take a trip to Radlandia and achieve Narvana. Lovable pink murder vacuum Kirby has always been a popular character, but he's also always been in the shadows of some of Nintendo's bigger personalities like Mario or Samus. With The Forgotten Land, however, Kirby is as close to reaching the lofty heights of his Nintendo stablemates as he's ever been. This is Kirby's first real 3D outing to date, something quite remarkable really, given how long the series has been running. The results are a very different feeling Kirby game to what's gone before, even if there is the familiarity and fuzzy feeling of playing a 3D platformer that's as generous and inventive as anything from the genre's golden era. In fact, The Forgotten Land plays an awful lot like what might have happened had our collective wishes for a 3D Kirby been answered back in the GameCube days. The Forgotten Land features so many new ideas and abilities for Kirby, but none can rival the new Mouthful mode that simply asks, what if Kirby could swallow up even more? Mouthful mode sees you swallow up whole vending machines that spit out cans, a big bouncing ball of water that spurts jets, and, as you've no doubt seen in the trailers, an entire actual car so that you can zoom from point to point. The move to 3D platforming is perhaps the most significant step forward in the series' history, and it works so well. This is an absolute hug of a game, and quite simply, Kirby's best outing yet. Ironical analysis. My readings indicate dramatic physical changes in you. You might call it physical amnesia. Is Metroid Dread the best 2D Metroid game to date? If it's not, it certainly comes close, but it's 100% a game that's worthy of the lineage, and that's as exquisitely designed and just as bold in its innovations as previous entries. 
This is a modern Metroid delivered with AAA panache, but told in the 2D style of the earlier games in the series, and it retains the grace and poise that's always marked Samus's adventures out from their many imitators. And don't you dare let the return to 2D turn you away from this game, because despite the viewing angle, this is one of the finest looking games on the Switch. There's abandoned laboratories lined with partly assembled bots, whale-sized corpses opened up on autopsy tables, and dark sparking corridors that connect caverns brimming with lava that are all gloriously lit and moodily conveyed. How blessed we are to have Samus properly back, and what a marvel it is to be reminded of how special Metroid can be. Sure, it took a long time to finally release, but the wait, we're delighted to say, was easily worth it. One word of warning though, as the name suggests, Metroid Dread is easily the scariest Metroid game yet, so maybe pack a spare Varia suit before you head on down to the planet ZDR. You know, just in case of emergencies. Monster Hunter Rise is as lavish and opulent a thing as Monster Hunter's ever been, and it comes with a generous suite of new features, making hunting more palatable, more action-packed, and much, much more pleasurable. It encourages experimentation, pushing you to pick up a weapon type you might previously have neglected, or to poke around in the depths to be found elsewhere in the game. And those depths are so much fun to explore. With all the new additions that this game brings, we'd argue that Rise is as deep as Monster Hunter has ever been. It's just that those depths have now been made a little easier to get into, which is surely no bad thing for newcomers to the series. This really might be the Monster Hunter for all then, and as much as Monster Hunter World pushed the series into the mainstream, it's Rise that could yet propel it to be a phenomenon. And at the very least, it learned the series some new fans along the way. If you've been put off by the challenge, the investment, or even the action of previous games, Rise does its very best to smooth the path and open up Monster Hunter's charms to all. And if you're smitten with the series already, well, Monster Hunter Rise might well be as good as video games can get. It's a pretty safe bet to say that most people who own a Switch own Animal Crossing New Horizons. And this game came out at exactly the right time too. When the world was dark and closed off and scary, along came this incredibly light and beautifully chill game that delivered an unforgettably cheerful sense of escapism to all who needed it. The new online features allowed separated friends and family members to visit each other virtually and give each other gifts, and in this way it kept people together in a time when it felt like we were all being pulled apart. Upon its initial release, New Horizons maintained its ability to surprise by giving players daily mysteries to unravel, new creatures to catch, or even new visitors to hang out with. But there's even more to do now thanks to the recent arrival of the Happy Home Paradise update. Animal Crossing New Horizons is probably the best this series has ever been, and therefore one of Nintendo's very best games to date. It presents a world absurd in its mundanity, yet shot through with magic, and it offers a fantasy world that's reassuringly dependable. We just hope you weren't planning on playing anything else on your Switch, because once you've started working on your very own island paradise, you'll never want to leave. Scrape away at the fitness aspect, at the RPG, and at the lifestyle elements that accompany Ring Fit Adventure, and you still have something that's pure Nintendo. Perhaps you'll see that at its purest in the 12 included minigames, all unlocked off the bat, and featuring their own global and local leaderboards. 
Here you'll ease a parachute as you glide through a course, sculpt pottery by maintaining posture, or play a game of circular whack-a-mole by pushing and pulling the rink on. There's an end of the pier charm to it all, the showmanship of the arcade matched with Nintendo's time-proven ability to take something, here the humble Pilates ring, and imbue it with a sense of play and wonder. Ring Fit Adventure is that and then some, boasting all the inventiveness of Nintendo's cardboard Curio Labo and matching it with a video game that compels you to come back for more. This might not have the show-stopping pull of a Mario or Zelda, but we can guarantee that one, it's the most authentic Nintendo experience you'll play this year, and two, if you really get into it, it's going to save you a fortune in gym membership fees. There might have been better Sega games in the 90s, but there's no better 90s Sega games than the Mega Drive Streets of Rage trilogy. Until now, that is. But Streets of Rage 4 is more than a belated sequel. Like Sonic Mania before it, this is a fan-made game that's a faithful and fully endorsed follow-up to a Sega classic, as well as being a little bit more besides. And as with Sonic Mania before, Streets of Rage 4 proves that, sometimes, the fans really do know best. It's worth pointing out that Streets of Rage 4 isn't an exercise in hollow nostalgia though. As divisive as the new art style proved at first look, it's plain to see that Streets of Rage 4 isn't afraid to forge its own path, and really it's that willingness to push the old formula into new territory that makes this project sing. There's a reverence for the source material, and with that a deep understanding of where there was room for improvement. It's in small, subtle things, such as how enemies no longer disappear off-screen when they're in play, or how when things get busy you never lose sight of where you are and where the threat is coming from next. This is way more than a mere revival of a once-loved series. Streets of Rage is quite simply the best of the bunch. Stupid boy. I told you nobody gets out of here. On the surface, Hades is a roguelike brawler, so each run is a run into hell, and hopefully out to the other side. And in between failures, you get to spend your earnings on new abilities and unlocks. But make no mistake, it's also way more than just a simple roguelike monster punching game, even if the procedural levels may give it that impression. Each individual run is shaped by the gods you meet during that run, and the things you choose when they offer you a handful of themed perks to pick from. The gods who deliver this stuff are wonderfully charming and untrustworthy and vain and drunken, and they're all written in a way that makes these immortal beings feel human and, most importantly, real. You'll want to push on just as much for the Moorish action as you will do for unravelling each god's story, so you can learn more about them and slowly unravel their subplots. And in between all that socialising, room after room of hell of course, but it's nowhere near as bad as that sounds, especially when you're playing as the mighty Zagreus, with his interchangeable weapons like the Captain America-esque throwable shield. Once Hades clicks for you, you'll feel as godly as the character you're playing as. You'll turn up to each run and wait for the horrors, then when the horrors arrive, you'll, well, shred them, you'll pulverise them. And then, when you eventually fall, you'll want to dive straight back into hell and do it all again. It's incredible. Let's deal some death. It's time to measure your worth as an instructor. Excuse the well-worn cliché, but Fire Emblem Three Houses really is a game of two halves. On the one hand, it's almost a dating sim, rich with romance options and side stories to explore, and on the other, it's a tightly engineered, staggeringly deep turn-based tactical game, serving up a smart evolution of the formula that Intelligent Systems has been developing for nearly 30 years now. There's a huge amount of game here, dauntingly so at times, with the first half of the campaign based within the walls of the monastery as you teach your pupils, before hostilities break out in the latter half as the story skips forwards and you engage in all-out war with rival houses. Three Houses is a deeply emotional tactical game, one in which you end up invested in each unit. 
In that way, it's true to what's always made Fire Emblem so special. It's just that Three Houses expresses itself on a different scale and a different style. So yes, Fire Emblem Three Houses may be a game of two halves, but they come together to make one amazing whole. It's now or never! A tactics game concerned with the world's dinkiest invasion, Into the Breach is a study in economy. From the game's tiny play areas and short match times to the sparse animation and simple rules that govern a unit, everything here is bright and glinting and wonderfully fit for purpose. Such basic elements lead to rich surprises, however, and this is one of those games that you can play for days and weeks and months without ever feeling that you've ceased to learn. Alongside being billiards and whack-a-mole and chess and American football and all the rest of it, Into the Breach is also FTL, in its delight in the glinting clockwork of failure, in its fascination with difficult choices, in surprising victories, and in drastic variation that works its strange magic within tight restrictions. All of these games come together to make Into the Breach, which is precise and brutal and complex and dizzying and utterly thrilling, and Into the Breach is somehow entirely its own thing too. If you've never played this game, we envy you, because tactical perfection awaits. Back in the days of the Nintendo and Sega console wars, there were countless playground squabbles surrounding who would win in a fight between Mario and Sonic. Just thinking about all those shattered childhood friendships makes me rather sad, especially seeing as nowadays there's no need to guess which mascot is the hardest. You can just put your arguments to the test in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It doesn't even matter if you like fighting games or not, Smash Brothers is for anyone who's ever fallen for video games full stop. A mad, impossibly expansive and expertly engineered celebration, not just of Nintendo's rich past, but that of the entire medium. The cast is outrageously vast, taking in all comers from Mario to Metal Gear, the options are plentiful and the soundtrack is just to die for. Oh, and the game underneath all that is alright too, a willfully chaotic dust-up that's best enjoyed shoulder to shoulder with friends. You'll find a little of all games here in Smash Bros. Ultimate, a breathless celebration of the medium in all its mad, incoherent and joyous whole. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, Mario would blatantly win in a fight against Sonic. got to tip your hat to Nintendo. While most companies trot out the same old formula with minor tweaks here and there for each and every one of their sequels, the Big N is constantly trying to reinvent the way we play with its most iconic of characters. So step forward Cappy, the magical talking hat being that allows Mario to possess and control everything from T-Rexes to slabs of meat. Odyssey is a wonderfully, purposefully incoherent Mario game in which each world has its own costumes and gimmicks, but also its own defining aesthetic. After the rolling majesty of Breath of the Wild's Hyrule, it's a bit like diving into a jumble sale. But like all jumble sales, there are brilliant things to discover. Strange worlds that glitter with unusual textures and seem to be driven by alien rules, and at the heart of it all, that brilliant sense of weight and momentum and pace that makes Mario the platformer that nobody else can touch. So Odyssey is a game of moments, in other words, and what could be more like Mario than that? Oh, and in this game you also get to see Mario's nipples, so it's a must-buy just for that, if I'm being perfectly honest. <laughs> when
Whether you fancy yourself as a kid now or a squid now, if you're looking for one of the best multiplayer games on the Switch, look no further than Splatoon 2 because it is incredible. Get it? Incredible? Hmm. Splatoon 2 is a glorious team-based shooter where you use your ink guns to spread delicious globs of colour around a map, diving into pools of the stuff to move about that little bit faster in squid form or simply shooting it to slap the opposition. That core mechanic is spread beautifully across a variety of multiplayer modes and a fairly generous single-player campaign where you work your way through a series of smartly designed self-contained levels. If you played the original game, there won't be too many new surprises here, although returning Splatoon players can also delight in a handful of quality of life improvements and an all new league battle mode in which you fight alongside friends. But if this is your first time with Splatoon, you are going to be in for a serious treat. Christmas isn't Christmas in my house unless someone ends up throwing mince pies at the TV because they think they've been unfairly thrashed in an ale fueled Mario Kart multiplayer session. Of course, countless others have taken on the Mario Kart formula since its inception in 1992, not least of which is Nintendo itself, delivering various mutations, variations and iterations over the years. It wasn't until Mario Kart 8, however, that anything matched the brilliance of the Super Nintendo original, with a work of stunning imagination and impeccable craft. Then, with the release of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on Switch a few years after, Nintendo delivered what's inarguably the best game in the series to date, bundling together all of the DLC that came with the Wii U version post-release, and most importantly, it also added a brilliant battle mode that completed the package. It's thrillingly close to perfection, and it's well worth owning, despite the potential hazards of any airborne Christmas snacks that might hurtle your way. How's this for a pitch? The Mario Kart team does for fighting games what it once did for driving games in a ludicrously colourful, energetic and original Switch exclusive. Sounds a bit far-fetched if I'm being honest with you, but ARMS delivered so well on that promise that people in the Eurogamer office would crowd around the TV every lunchtime in order to play it. And also quite a lot of time when it wasn't lunch either, which may have explained all of our missed deadlines. But anyway, this is a fighter that's instantly accessible, offers boundless depth, and does all of this with one hell of a spring in its step. Oh, and springs in its arms too, as your fighters reach into the screen in an enjoyably pliable brand of pugilism. The chances of a sequel seem slim, because despite its brilliance, arms never found the audience it deserves. So pick this one up as soon as you can, and make the most of a game that's truly one of a kind. And finally, and you all knew it was coming, it's The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a game that's so good it's on pretty much every best of Switch list ever made. Now including this one too. Breath of the Wild is a game about nature, and to make a game about nature that's this good, Zelda's creators had to change the way they created. The precision tooling of every part of the environment had to be hidden away, and the intricate dungeons that clipped together across the landscape in other Zelda games were replaced with massive vistas that at first appear thrillingly empty. Do not be fooled by that emptiness though. Breath of the Wild is as obsessively designed and crafted as any Zelda game before it, but everything in this huge, seemingly untamable game is put in place to make you feel lost and small and at the mercy of the elements. Pick a direction and just go exploring. An adventure of genuine beauty and revelation awaits. You must save her, my daughter.
and that's us done. Obviously, these are just our picks, and with so many unbelievably good games to choose from, you're bound to have spotted something we've missed. So please do share your love for your favourite Switch games in the comments below. Then, if we get enough suggestions, I can do another Best of Switch Games update video, but this time with suggestions from you. Please do like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel for almost daily videos from Eurogamer, and if you want to expand your gaming horizons on your Switch even more, do check out some of our past Switch best of lists that are on screen and clickable right now. Goodbye!